Young entrepreneurs in Calabar, the Cross River State capital, are carving a niche for themselves and creating job opportunities for younger generation in the face of rising unemployment figure, which currently stands at 13.9 million, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. We took our time with two of them, Emmanuel Ezima and John Edom. Curbing unemployment in Nigeria is one of the biggest challenges faced by government as population figure of able-bodied young Nigerians continue to grow astronomically. With little or no opportunity to get employed, a lot of young people have resorted to honing and applying their survival skills and becoming entrepreneurs. Emmanuel Ezima, a graduate of theater arts from the University of Calabar, is one of such young people. He hails from Biase local government area of Cross River State. For him, being a graduate is enough reason to look forward to a white collar job, but much more important to him is the ability to create more job opportunities for others. This thought drove Emmanuel Azima to start his shoemaking business in 2013 right behind his grandfather's window, using gum and leather to carve a niche for himself as well as engaging youth to be useful to the society. Today, he runs A to Z Kutia with over 20 students, some of whom are university graduates, where he teaches them the art of shoe making and clothing. Besides using the proceeds from his business to cater to the family needs, he says giving other young people a voice and a means of survival was more important for him. Here we make shoes and we sew clothes. And apart from sewing, we teach, we teach, the, the, we teach the upcomings. I call them the mundanes. We teach them you know, the, to shape their future, to see how we can use entrepreneurship to touch the society at which we are. We want to see how we can use this platform to, you know, reach out to the society which we are uh, um, in terms of shoemaking and also tailoring. Thousands of people will tell you, God bless you, God bless you, I am okay with that. Most of them don't pay, don't, most of them pay, most of them don't even give anything. But we don't, we just need them to come out, have something to do for yourself in the nearest future. So the aim is not just to come train them how to go make money, but let them go impact on others. That is just the main aim of this project which we are right now, Spirit of Enterprise. Emmanuel says business is good for now, but would have been better if the necessary equipment to aid production was available. We need the government to help us to you know, expand the dream because the dream is a big dream. Let's expand the dream in the sense that if they should support us, probably maybe financially or machine-wise, we we'll definitely, we'll definitely have a huge amount of youths coming around to have what to do. First of all, to reduce the unemployment in the, in the, in the society which, which we are. It, 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 most of the graduates, the finished school, and they don't have what to do for themselves. This we definitely have, I mean, to shape them to having a good future for themselves. Mostly we have females, we have females, female shoemakers too. We have female tailors and we have male. But a lot of them, most, majority are graduates. Apart from the fact that most of them don't have what to do. This could help them. So let's see how we can join hands together and see how we can reduce unemployment in Cross River States. Mr. David Ezema, the proud father of Emmanuel, recalls how it all began for his son. Emmanuel started showing me trends of using his hands to walk at the age of four. And I noticed that in him, that we buy him a toy pieces the toy and try his best to see how he can put those things back and actually he used to succeed so from there I knew that this is what he's going to do 
This is somebody that wants to use his hands. And actually, today, he's using his hands. Emmanuel prefers to get injured any other part of his body, but not his hands. So that is it. Here we are, we have the talent in shoemaking. Any type of shoe, he will do it for you. Bags, he does it. Belts, paws. You just name it. He does all that. The community where he resides benefits from his feet. And the people are delighted by Emmanuel's contribution to a job creation and poverty alleviation. I call him first the dreamer. I see him very creative and I like to encourage what is good. And besides that, he has um, been able to, you know, make a lot of miscreants who would have uh, probably uh, gone contrary to societal norms or environmental, uh, the environmental, uh, you know, dictates here, to come to learn one form of trade or the other. He is economically viable to this area because um, he's closing the gap gradually. You know, people will come out. Those who are trained here after training. They go get established with little stipends, they're on their own. And then they employ, they keep employing, and then this itself will help to reduce uh, the employment uh, rate. However, I'm still, because, you know, research is a continuous process. Another young man in the state who has displayed a lot of passion in the world of job creation is John Adam, who graduated from the Cross River State University of Technology with a Bachelor's of Arts Honours degree in 2014. He is the first son of his family, yet has decided not to wait to be employed, but to recycle waste materials such as campaign papers and other posters. Sometimes I have someone to assist me, and sometimes I come alone, and then I display these products for people to see. The essence is for people to come and interact with my creative space and also uh, create that awareness, you know, of uh, uh, waste to wealth. Your, your ability for you to study colors and know how to create contrast, you know, so that um, you don't make the work too noisy or make it too scattered. Uh -huh. At least there has to be a blend. Uh -huh. So with consistency, as you keep you know, as I keep working with these colors, I, I'm, I'm, I'm able to understand, you know, how to blend them together and working with the elements and the principles so that at least the colors can rhyme because rhythm is one of the principles of art. Uh -huh. Also, emphasis is one of, also one of the principles of art. So no matter what you're doing in a design, at the end, the message should still be there. Uh -huh. Let somebody see it and know that, okay, this is what this thing stands for. This is what it represents. Uh -huh. Still, in addition to the beauty uh -huh, that is being created. His skill is now a vehicle to convey the message of inspiration to other young people. While these entrepreneurs strive to make a mark and contribute towards the reduction of unemployment in the state and the nation at large, they still look up to government and other well-meaning Nigerians for support and provision of necessary funding in order to help them better their craft and spread further the opportunity to reduce crime rates in the country. If you desire to be the change in your community, then be part of the eyewitness team by giving us blow-by-blow -blow account of what's happening in your area. Simply take the short and upload with relevant information to the Channels TV Eyewitness platform, which is available on the Channels TV app, downloadable from the various app stores online. Launch the app, check for Eyewitness on the menu, tap and follow instructions on how to upload your story. It's quite simple. Now let's see what you already uploaded for the week. These shots show part of the efforts being put by residents of Badari community into the rehabilitation of their road. The road, which had become an eyesore, especially when it rains, is getting the needed attention. Cutsy, the residents. This is a welcome development, says our eyewitness. The next shot shows Oluwo Amoju Street in Okorodu. Our eyewitness says the road, which was recently constructed, 
has now been turned into a permanent park by tricycle and bus operators. It says even the presence of the Wobo LCD headquarters close by has not deterred this unwholesome practice. This video is the aftermath of a fire outbreak caused by fuel tankers in the Ijegu Egba area of Satellite Town on December 25th. Our eyewitness says the damage was monumental and could have been avoided. Those are your shots. Do keep them coming. Next week, we'll be back for another episode of Eyewitness Report. Till then, I am Chris Elams, and I'll keep my eyes on you.